Hey, what's up, everybody? What's going on? What's happening? What's happening? How are you doing on this wonderful Friday? You know what I mean? We are here. We are live. This is the first installment of Brown and Balance Live, man. I am. <laughs> Y'all don't even understand how excited I am about today, about what we're doing today, about the special guests I'm bringing on, about all that. Before we do all that, you know, in true Brown and Balance fashion, you know, I got to make a statement. I got to do something, you know, get the people out there, get everybody like, yeah, yeah, let's do this. So first thing I want to do is, man, first of all, rest in peace to everyone we've lost. Maude Arbery, George Floyd, somebody go find and arrest them guys that shot Breonna Taylor. I'm not going to say their names. Their names not worth it. I'm not going to put out this. So somebody go and get them and put them in jail or do something about it. I just saw a note the other day that said they're finally going to go over a grand jury. So, you know, let's please let that happen. Um, today is also Friday. I try every day of the week to do this, but on Fridays especially, I try to only wear and rock black owned brands. So first thing I want to do is shout out to my brother Meech of the Infinite Taste here in Chicago, one of the dopest chefs, a really good friend of mine, one of the dopest black chef caterers in Chicago. This is his line, Love Bites, want to wear his hoodie. Um, also, I want to shout out to my brother, uh, Law Willis, man, from Chicago, but now is in Seattle. He is the young man that does all the uh, Brown and Balance tank tops, t-shirts, everything you see, and he designed a special hat for me today. I wanted to make sure I wore today since this is the inaugural Brown and Balance since we all about, you know, getting brown and black people and, and, and getting us moved up and in a different level and, and just, you know, showing how dope we are and how talented we are. So the backwards hat is always like the staple for Josh. If you know me, you've been around me, you've been anywhere near me, I always got the backwards hat on. But today, because I asked for this specific hat, I got to wear it to the front, man. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this around. This is the perfect hat to wear for the day, right? Because this is what we want. So it ain't political. It's just what it is. You feel me? So this is what we want to do. So everybody, I want to first of all, man, thank Campari for partnering with us on this. Everybody, please, by all means, get down in the chat. Follow Campari community on Instagram, Facebook, all of that. Sign up for their mailing list, please. I was just uh, speaking to a friend of mine, and I opened up my mailbox today, and I got something from Campari in my mailbox that I didn't even know I was going to need, but I got it and it's something I can use for the rest of this year and on. There are so many gifts and so many just good things that come from being on that mailing list. I suggest everyone, just do it for me, right? Just if, if you love Josh or love what Josh stands for, sign up on their mailing list and get down with them and, and see what they have going on, man. They're wonderful partners. I want to thank them for that. I also want to thank Lush Life for being a part of this, uh, believing in this idea that we had three, four years ago. But enough with just Josh, right? Let's get to the, the segment. Let's get to the good part of the show, right? I have a very special guest we want to bring on first. Um, right now, one thing we've learned in quarantine and during the pandemic and all that is that cash isn't always king, right? You got to have some credit. And there's a special young lady that I know uh, that has helped me with my credit, has helped Many other people with theirs. I'm actually a business partner of hers, and we help people together, and we get it going. So the first thing I want to do is I want to bring on Miss Mia Love from the Bay, but in Vegas or somewhere across the earth. I don't know which. Every day, every time we talk, she's somewhere different. So I just want to say what's up to her. How you doing, Love? How you feel today? Hello. I'm doing amazing, Josh. How are you doing today? I'm living, and that's better than most, right? You know what I mean? So I'm just taking I'm, – I'm becoming the glass half full kind of guy. You know what I mean? I mean, you know me, you know how I am, but you know, I'm going to do what I do. You know what I mean? So let's. Okay. It looks like we got a little, the internet gremlins are real. They're always here trying to take over. The internet um, is, uh, is very real, but I'm sure that Josh will be back in just a second. Absolutely. Uh, no problem. No problem. Yeah. I have no problem freestyling while he's gone. Just yeah. definitely want to give it back to Josh. I know the internet gremlins are trying to take over. I, know, right? I want to definitely give it back to you just, you know, for all that you're doing with Brown and Balanced and all that you're doing to, to highlight the contributions of black and brown bartenders and, you know, 
you're you've always been the person that's rooted for the underdog and rooted for the people that are underrated. And so just creating this platform to get information out there. We really just want to celebrate you. I mean, I know somebody said it on a post the other day, but it's really your time, Josh. So embrace it. I know that you always want to be on the background and don't like to be in the front of the front of the, you know, the camera and stuff. But just know that we definitely appreciate all that you're doing and everything that's gone into that. Oh, I'm not. I'm not getting emotional today. Don't do that. Like y'all did me. No, no, no. Cheers, okay. cheers. You can do it with. We can do it with the toast. Thank you. Cheers. Absolutely. Let's, let's, let's talk about credit, Mia. Let's 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 let people know what goes into that credit score. What are the factors that determine that credit score? What are the things that can affect it going up and down? Um, that's more of your expertise level. You've given me a lot of tips and tricks over the years, man. So I'm gonna give the floor to you, and I'm gonna get out of the way, and I'm gonna let the expert handle it. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Like you said, cash is king, but credit is power. And so what we need to do is be able to take back our power, especially right now. Everything is so crazy that, you know, the reset is happening. Everything's happening with this pandemic and people were literally just put in these weird places that they don't know how to deal with. So I'm just going to tell you how your credit score is calculated because when you're applying for an apartment, when you're applying for a house, a car, they tell you what your score is, but they don't tell you what that score is made up of. So it's like, where did you get this mystery number? Where did you come up with how my credit score is calculated? So I want to demystify that for everybody. So I'm just going to go ahead and break it down for you. And by the way, this is credit and cocktails. No judgment zone for me. I am on the West coast. It's 11 o'clock in the morning, but I'm having a nice, cup of uh, alkaline tea with a little bit of Appleton Estate. Let me turn it around the right way. Appleton Estate rum in there. Labels out. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So let's get into it. How your credit score is calculated. Okay. So the biggest piece of your credit score is 35%. That's your payment history. Okay. This is really, really important. It's making sure that over the last two years, wow. you are making time payments versus late payments. Guys, this is super important. Okay. If you have to make a payment and you're not going to be able to get it in on time, contact that company and move the payment date. Say, for example, your rent or your mortgage is due on the first, your car payment is due on the fifth, your light bill is due on the eighth. Call the car company and tell them that you can't pay that until the 22nd. You got to do that, of course, before the payment is actually due or before it's late. But one late payment can drop your score as much as 60 to 100 points. So it hits as hard as a bankruptcy does. And a lot of people don't know that. So that's the biggest piece of the pie, the biggest piece of the apple. If you're trying to be healthy, just know that 35 percent of how your credit score is calculated is those on is that payment history. Then the next piece is the capacity and amount owed. So it's really simple. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's actually not. So I'm gonna break it down for you. Say this is my credit card, right? This card has a thousand dollar limit on it. That does not mean that I have a thousand dollars to spend. That means that I have $300 max to spend. Don't go over that $300 mark. And I'm gonna tell you why, because that lets the credit card companies feel like you are living on that credit and not leveraging it. You wanna make them feel like they're giving it to you just so that you can use it if you need to. Now, there are companies that will close your account if you don't ever use it. So throw a tank of gas, a piece of gum or something like that on there every now and then. But you got to make sure that you keep that card under 30 percent. Now, if you really want to hit that sweet spot, keep it under 10 percent. So that's one hundred dollars if you have a thousand dollar limit, because, again, it's just showing that you don't need that credit card to live on, but that you can have it available if you want to use it. And that you'll see, like, say, for example, you have cards that are maxed out. If you're able to go in and pay those cards, down, you're going to see your score grow up really quickly. Your score updates twice. And I know we've talked about that before, Josh, mm -hmm. your score updates twice a month. It updates on the first and it updates on the 15th. So if you can make those payments and bring that balance down before the statement closing date, not the due date, before that statement closing date, you're going to see your score go up very quickly. And then the next piece of that is length of credit. That's 15%. It's not a big piece, but it's a really mighty piece. So I look at length of credit like, like I look at relationships. Say you have friends that you've been friends with for a really long time and you don't talk to them every day. You don't end the friendship. You don't say, I'm not I'm not going to talk to you again. Well, okay, you're not supposed to. <laughs> if it, if <laughs> stop credit, as long as they haven't done anything wrong to you, if you don't talk to them every day, you still keep them on as friends. Same thing with your credit cards. You still keep them on as creditors. You don't want to throw that creditor out the door. There's a lot of people say, I'm going to pay this off and I'm going to close it. Don't close it. Listen, the credit bureaus can't tell whether it was closed by you, the consumer, or whether it was closed by the credit grantor. All they do is give you a hit for a closed account and you don't want that. 
So the length of credit, the time that you've been able to enter into these positive relationships with these creditors, it really matters. That's 15 percent of your score. So keep those cards open. I know, like I said, there are a few banks that I don't want to drop any names because they're not paying me. A few banks that will close your account if you don't use it. So just throw something on there every now and then and pay attention to those interest rates. If you have a choice between two different Visa cards and one has a 27 percent and the other one has a 9 percent, first you want to do a balance transfer and get everything off of that 27 percent card card onto the 9%, but you want to just make sure that you're using it. Don't close that card. Just hold on to it. And a lot of people say they want to close it because of the annual fee. Listen, this is where credit is power comes in. If you don't want to pay the annual fee, call the bank and tell them you're not paying it, especially right now. If you have a positive relationship with that creditor, you're paying everything on time. They want to keep you as a customer. So just say, hey, I need this annual fee to be waived. I'll keep using your card but I'm not paying that annual fee. And most reputable banks will go ahead and waive that for you. So don't worry about that. Then the next piece is new credit inquiries. Now this is small, but it's really, really mighty. It's 10% of your score. So say you're out shopping for a car. Don't let that dealership run your credit 15 times because they're running it and then they have a, an underwriter running it. Go in knowing what your score is, go knowing what your payment is and tell them what you can and can't pay. Because every time you get those inquiries, it gives you a hit on your score. So you don't want to just keep getting multiple inquiries on your credit report. Now, there is a way that me or Josh or any one of our other business partners can help you get those inquiries taken off. It's called a multiple inquiry removal letter. And we have that available to you that you can shoot to the credit bureaus. But initially, every single time somebody does a hard inquiry, you're going to take a hit. Now, here's another thing that a lot of people don't know and they're not going to tell you. A good portion of the companies that you're applying for credit with are owned by a company called Surety Bank. You can do what's called a soft inquiry. So when you put in, when you fill out that application online, try submitting it with the last four digits of your social security number only. Because when you do that, that's a soft inquiry versus a hard inquiry. So it takes away less points. And if they accept it, like for example, um, I'll just throw this one out there. Victoria's Secret is a company that's owned by Surety Bank. They'll accept the soft inquiry and it's called the shopping cart trick. And I can, I can tell you guys more about that. If you want to post the shopping cart trick on there, you can Google it or I will post something on there so that you can know about the shopping cart trick and how, because of the holidays come up, people still want to shop, how to use that to your advantage to get credit extended to you. And then the last piece of how your credit score is calculated is the types of credit. You got to have a good mix of credit. You need to have um, some unsecured and secured debt. So you want to have like a credit card. You want to have a car payment, a mortgage or something like that. You got to have a mix. It's just showing the credit bureau that you can enter into different types of relationships with different types of creditors. That's all it is. So let me tell you a little bit about the credit bureaus. They're privately owned companies. Everybody thinks that they're government entities and that they're owned by somebody. One of them is actually owned by a bank, by Goldman Sachs Bank. So these are not government entities. They're not something that can come in and get you. A lot of the letters that you get from collection agencies are not even real. They're just threats that they make. So just make sure that you know your credit power. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions for you. But I just want to make sure that people know that while cash is king, credit is power. It's really, really simple to get your power back. That's what we specialize in doing. Doing. And we have a lot of things that we do specifically for this industry because we want to make sure that we have that power. We're the ones that are listening to everybody, making sure that you know everybody feels good every day. But we got to make sure that we're taking care of our own. So like I said, I'm here to help anybody out that needs any information. And I can answer any questions for you that you have about credit. But we just wanted to de demystify how your credit score is calculated for you. And that's your FICO score. It's a software package, guys. There's not a real person sitting there behind it like saying, I want to give me at this point. I want to take away this point. It's a software package. And with anything like that, there are ways and tips and tricks that you can use to, you know, to get around that. Like I tell people all the time, if you make two payments within that same statement period, it's going to look like you're paying that bill twice. So it's going to also help your score go up faster. So say, for example, this is my credit card. My payment on this card is $118. I may say I want to pay $50 on the first end and then $68 two days later. That makes that package think that I'm paying twice. So it's going to make my score go up, even though I'm only making that one payment. So that's how your credit score is calculated. That's some tips and tricks about credit. I don't know if anybody has any questions. I could go on about this for all hours. Day, all day, yo. All day long, man. I know, I know, I know. This is what we just how our conversations go all the time. We're talking about doing this, but this is something, especially us as, as brown and black people, that we're not taught at an early age, right? Like mm -hmm. all of us messed our credit up when we was 18, right? I'll never forget. I got a credit card. 
I didn't even have a bank account and I had a credit card. You know what I mean? And I still had, you know, money in the Nike shoe box. You know what I'm saying? But I had a credit card with a big limit and I was like, all right, well, I'll pay it when I pay it. You know what I mean? So I totally, totally love what you bring into us with the credit thing and all that. It's some some super dope information. Let people know where to find you at to talk about credit. Sure. So my handle is the Good Credit Diva, but I will tell you that I am rebranding to Real Freedom with Love because what I realized is that, you know, I'm into Reiki, energetic, prana, healing, and you can't have freedom without love. And real freedom is mental freedom. It's financial freedom. It's physical freedom, all of those together. So you can right now, today, you can find me at Mia at the Good Credit Diva dot com. Or you can just go to the Good Credit Diva going forward. I'm going to change my platform to Real Freedom with Love. I'm working on that rebrand right now. Word. And just, you know, really happy Word. to partner with everybody. Super dope. I love that. But look, you don't just do credit. Like, I think that's the one thing that, I mean, we love about you with the credit. And, and I think that's how we met, right? When you were doing the, uh, the seminar in Dallas. Actually, ironically, that was the first time we did Brown and Balance. Right. Uh, the next day, you know what I mean? So that was the first time we really met and hung out. But you also are a... Black owned and a black women owned bartender service in the Bay, in California, and on the West Coast. Can you tell people a little bit about your business there as well? Absolutely. We actually just hit our 10th year and we had this big 10 year anniversary celebration planned and then the world closed. So <laughs> my business partner, Michelle, and I have a company called Poor Planet, not poor like sad, like pour the drink in planet. And so what we do is we cover all event, all aspects of putting on events for you, event bartending. We bring other folks in. We've had Josh come in and do some events with us and a lot of other dope folks that are here and involved in this movement. So we basically bring the party to you. We ask you to raise the bar, bring in Poor Planet, move out of the way and let us handle everything else for you. So we've done events with a lot of really, really cool folks. And it's just, it's good to have this, to have this avenue. A lot of people don't realize that I'm actually a bartender. I do make drinks because they see me doing all kinds of other stuff, but I really love it. I love to be passionate about just helping people have a good time, but I want people to be, have a good time. I also want them to be informed. It's all about living your best life. So. Yeah, that's all yeah. it's about in the day. Well, look, Mia, thank you for your part of this segment. We're going to bring you back again. For anybody who missed you today, we're going to definitely have you come back and uh, talk a little bit more about credit. We're going to get a little more in depth. Next time you come in, I appreciate you. You already know we work together. We do this together and, you know, Excellent. sky's the limit. So thank you for your time. I appreciate you. Anything you want to leave the people with? Just cheers. Just, you know, make sure that your mind is happy. Make sure that your heart is happy and make sure that your body's happy. And there you have it, guys. All right. So, look, that was our first segment. That was a credit, right? We all need that, especially now. Now that we're not working, now the cash flow isn't coming in the way it was. We, we definitely need credit. We need credit education. We need financial education uh, more than ever nowadays. So before we move on to our next segment, I got to say once again, y'all know how this goes. Campari community on Instagram is going to pop up on the screen. Follow them ASAP. Tell them I sent you. You know what I mean? Sign up on the mailing list and get down with what they got going on. Now, we didn't do this last time, but I want to throw a little black culture trivia out there. I think we're going to start this little piece up, you know, as we move on. So we all know today is 9-11. Rest in peace to everyone who lost their lives on 9-11. Uh, thank you to all the first responders that, you know, responded to the tragedy that happened on 9-11 back in 2001. Um, I didn't want the day to go by without acknowledging that. But to bring the mood up from the tragedy that happened on 9-11, black trivia that you can share with your friends Jay-Z dropped the Blueprint album, which to me is a top five classic album, on 9-11, the same day that the unfortunate tragedy happened. So that's the one little bit of, of shine and light that happened on such a horrible day. So, yo, if you're a big Jay-Z fan like I am, and you love, you know, the culture, and you love the hip-hop culture and things like that, you can always remember that album dropped on 9-11 to give New Yorkers especially, because he is from Brooklyn, to give them a little sense of normalcy on what was a horrible day. So that was just a little... Black culture trivia for you guys, if you didn't know. Also, Fabulous dropped Street Dreams that day. But, you know, unfortunately, Hove came out. So, eh, you know, not taking nothing from Fab, but that's what it is. So, a little black trivia for you guys. Just to throw it out there, man. I'm going to listen to Blueprint pretty much all the rest of the day today. I listen to it at least once a week anyway. But if you're at home, anything like that, jump on the Brown and Balanced uh, Instagram page and tell me what your favorite Jay-Z track was. And let's have some fun with it, all right? So, let's move on to our next segment. I got my street correspondent, my my ear to the streets, my 
you know, on the grind, out there getting all the dope stories, man. Paris brought us straight from Atlanta, coming Hi. in the building. What's up, mommy? How you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you? Doing good. Hey, I can't wait for this segment. Um, <laughs> there aren't many of us that are parents in this industry. Um, I believe I got you and our, our special guest beat because I got two more than y'all. Um, <laughs> well, but, you know what they say, Josh. Once you get it right the first time, you know why take why why take the test the second time? Well, you know I right. always like to leave a little room for improvement, so you know I'm all about practicing. You know what I'm saying? And make sure I get it right. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, Paris is here. We got our special guest, man, my brother, my homie, the only black dude I know in Pittsburgh. My big brother Cecil Usher is in the building, and they're gonna take it away, and we're gonna talk a little bit about parenting. And uh, in our industry and tips and tricks for you guys, our parents. So I'm going to get out the way and I'm going to enjoy some some wild turkey while y'all do what y'all do. Awesome. Wonderful. Hello. Okay. So hey. um, what's up, Cecil? So, How you doing? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm doing well. Do you have a drink? Are we? Are I, we do, do well. I mean, you know, these kids, these badass <laughs> kids. These kids. So cheers. Cheers. Got myself a little Espaloni, I think was what I. <laughs> Ended up calling yeah. it a, a spill in the granny. So yeah. my name is uh, ooh, here for it. Um, yeah. So yeah, my name is Paris Bradis, and this segment is called "Someone Come Get These Kids," where we're just going to be talking about being um, being black parents in this industry. I feel like children are one of those um, taboo subjects that we never really um, we never really broach that subject. We try to keep our our lives yeah. very separate. separate. Exactly. So. Um, I just wanted to um, introduce you, Cecil Usher, um, apparently the only black man in Pittsburgh, according to Josh Davis. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's others. So, I travel, though. I travel. I move. There you I, move go. I move. And so, I felt um, about the New York. I was originally born and raised in New York. I've been okay. in Pittsburgh now. This is my 10th anniversary. So 10 years in New York. I was there in New York in, during 9 11. That was my senior year of high school. Wow. Um, yeah, so I've been in Pittsburgh now 10 years. Last year, I started my own uh, bartending consulting and event company where mm -hmm. we will go in and either do staff training, uh, help open up new bars, create a cocktail program for them, or we do events, weddings, uh, brand activations, uh, product launches, uh, education will go to your house. We have uh, mobile bar carts and we'll go to your house. We'll, especially during these times where social distancing, We'll pull a car right up to the back of your uh, to our back to your porch, and we'll bartend for you guys. So I'm here for that. Sounds like a yeah. sounds like a block party almost, like little mini block party. Yeah. Oh yeah, we bring speakers. Yeah, we bring the party to you. We bring the that high end stuff to you. So in case you're, you're missing it, I love that. Um, so you mentioned mindful hospitality. You run your own business. That's amazing. Um, I don't know where you find the time. Um, are you working in any bars right now or? Uh, yeah, we just uh, opened up uh, St. Clair Social, which you see behind me. Uh, this is a new brand new bar that just opened up. Uh, me and my partner, Kat Cannon, who uh, a lot of you might know from uh, camp and other things. Uh, yeah, so this is new. We have a couple more projects that we're working on and we're doing a lot of weddings and events. Wedding season has been popping off now that restrictions have been kind of easing up. So. Nice. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, we feel very blessed to be able to work and also doing a lot of work with organizations like Thirst, trying to lobby and get uh, some insurance, you know, get them. We've been paying insurance for a while and help save these restaurants. So definitely check th that out, Thirst Group. Absolutely. Um, so the topic that we seem to have been avoiding, but we are going to oh. get right into it. Let's talk about these kids. <laughs> oh, it's going to be for me and the kids too, for sure. So you have um, you have the one beautiful son um, that I've heard so much about. Um, how old is he? What's what's going on with him? Yeah, my son's named Crosby Jaden. Crosby Jaden Usher, little CJ. He just turned seven years old this past Wednesday on the ninth. So Virgo season, yes. Oh yeah, yes. He's, he's Virgo to the team, <laughs> driving his mom crazy, and then I have to get in between it, um, which is kind of you know the role. Uh, she's an amazing woman who allows me to. Do the things that I do, and then she calls me for the big help. You know, lay down a big hammer at times. Uh, there you but go. Yeah, it's he's he's a blessing though. He's a blessing. He's the reason why I have my business and everything. I love it. Um, so we were actually uh, speaking about that a little bit earlier in the week. Um, 
what is it like co-parenting? Um, what are some things that you love about it? Could be, you know, it could be one of those difficult situations. Sure. Yeah. What are what are some difficulties that you've um, that you've yeah. encountered? Well, because I think some things that when you're not together, you guys have different kind of goals and directions you kind of want to move, and you have to kind of be able to communicate. Communication, if anything, this is what I like. The situation has taught me is having to find that middle ground and think bigger than yourself, which I think a lot of parenting is about. It's not about you anymore once you have a child. And yeah. this is even more the case when you have to learn how to listen to somebody else, realize what's the big goal here. It's not me being right, not them being wrong. It's about making uh, our child the happiest and getting exactly. that achieved first. Putting exactly. the child first. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love that. You're absolutely right. Um, so then I guess I also want to kind of talk about um, what are some challenges that you face um, bringing up a child of mixed race? Um, it's it's one of those things where, you know, he's he's kind of on that cusp of both, right? Like yeah. he's oh, yeah. very much a black man, but then he very much has this um this other racial identity. Um what are some what are some challenges that you face with that? It's I mean, especially for I mean, I think race is a, as we see in the country, it's a huge issue that is difficult to, you know, unpack for adults. Adults are having trouble with it. So um I if anything, I think it's almost he gets he's he loves his skin. He's so proud of his, you know, brown coffee colored skin. And he loves that he's a mixture between mommy and daddy. He talks about that often. And we, you know, try to show him uh, parts of his culture. His, his mom's from a small town in Pennsylvania. Uh, so he doesn't see a lot of people who look like him necessarily as much as when he spends time with me in the city. Um, mm -hmm. So kind of getting both of those worlds, uh, again, communicating with him about, you know, the differences of mommy and daddy and making them feel very proud about what that is. So that no matter what people can come to him with, he has a good uh, sense of identity in himself and he's proud of that. He knows he's you know, mixed and he understands that, but he's proud of that he's mixed because that makes him special and that makes him what he is his, like, his strength. So I think teaching him that strength is, is key. You know, I'm making, raising him to be a, a proud you know, black man and you know, realizing that he has that power in himself that Nobody could tell him tell him about himself, pretty much. Absolutely! Oh my God, adopt me. Um, <laughs> I'm raised by you, Cecil. Um, so um, you run a business, you have a child. What are some like? What are some skills that you've gained from parenting that kind of translate into your business? Uh, everything. I mean, to be honest, everything. It it kind of happened all at the same time. I found out. I took over my first bar program and find out I was having a child within uh, seven days of each other, one week. So the skills that I had developed in both of them, I think kind of grew together. A lot of it was patience, um, being able to be an effective communicator, talking, having to be able to say things and spell things out to people, assuming that they don't know, no matter what their experience level is. Um, seeing the bigger picture, as I even mentioned before, of you have to plan when you're a parent. You just can't get up and go. You know, leaving the house, as we all know as parents, it's a whole ordeal. You have to get 50 million things together. Same thing with running a bar program. I have to think about 20 steps ahead, how everybody's gonna have their stuff together. If we're gonna move, we all gotta move together. Does everybody have their things? Did everybody do this? Do we know where this is? It's literally kind of one and the same. Um, and I have to sometimes style myself back when I'm bartending, not to be too much of a parent because it yeah. kind of falls, it falls in too easy to it at yeah. times. But, you know, it's, it's, it's been a blessing and without it, I don't think I could do either one of them really well. So I think because I had to do both of them at the same time, it's made me a, a better, more effective leader and hopefully a parent. Awesome. Um, so here, how about a little would you rather? Um, right. Would you rather deal with a belligerent drunk guest or a child having a temper tantrum? That's a good one. I'd probably <laughs> say a drunk guest because I can definitely kick them out and not probably have to see them for a while. Yeah. Kid, assuming it's mine, we'll probably, I'll have to talk to him at some point again. <laughs> Got, it. Got it, oh man. Um, so what is one piece of wisdom that you are going to try and teach your son as he's growing up? Like what's something that's like really major, major for you, just like as a man, as a black man? Um, I think, I mean, 
ownership, taking, you know, taking onus on yourself, realizing that you don't have to look out for things or people, expecting people to give you things, looking for things. You have all the tools in yourself to get what you want and need. So learn, read, be kind, and all the things that you want will come to you in those ways. Wonderful. Okay, so I think I'm gonna ask you uh, some questions. Um, just like some like little lightning round stuff. Uh, we're yeah. drinking tequila right now, so let's um, let's say, would you rather a Paloma or a margarita? Margarita. Margarita. Okay. Margarita. What is what's your current favorite uh, book that you're reading? Uh, favorite book reading now. Uh, probably uh, it's a book on business about incorporating, uh, learning those tax breaks. Um, as me was talking about, I mean, your credit score, they're about taxes, you know, the rich don't pay taxes. And if you're trying to get to that next level, you don't need to be paying taxes either. So find out how to legally not pay your taxes. There you go. Is to move. Wonderful. Um, I know that you're a fan of cigars. Uh, what is your, what's your favorite cigar and, uh, what's your favorite like cigar bar in, in Pittsburgh? I'm a huge fan of, uh, Ashton. Uh, Ashton's uh, cigars, nice kind of vanilla wrappers, uh, the style of like Churchill, which are the super long Winston Churchill ones that he would, you see him smoking. So a good long cigar, smoke for a couple hours. Um, and then best favorite bar probably be a place called Leaf and Bean. It's kind of a real casual space outdoors, nothing fancy, but uh, it's always a good time. You can bring, you know, bottles and sip, drink, Relax with good company. So, you know, anytime I get to go relax with a cigar, it's always a good time, to be honest. Wonderful. What's your um what's your favorite moment with your son Ben during uh during quarantine? I mean, just the amount of time. I not having to be behind a bar. Uh, you know, this company my company just started end of last year. So we we just had a year anniversary. Um, and having this much time was probably the first time in my life I didn't work for two to three months, period. I had no work and I got a chance to spend all that with him. And for me, that had been just the best success of seeing him a lot more because we don't live together. So all that quality time and watching him grow day by day and him, you know, embrace the time spent with me and see how much he enjoys it now. And I think his mom got that too. And we've been working on spending, you know, her moving back closer towards, towards me. So all I think has been a great success to be honest for quarantine, you know, just being with him. I love that. Um, yeah. And then last question. I know that my son loves Baby Shark. He is also four. Um, so what is what is your favorite um, song that you've been listening to lately? And what is your son's favorite song that he's been making you listen to lately? <laughs> <laughs> well, oddly enough, one of his, like the song that I can think of that he played the most every time was, um, he was a big fan of Old Town Road. That song, <laughs> he would, yeah, he would jam to Old Town Road all summer long. Still, if it comes on randomly in the playlist, he'll kind of rock out to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's a big fan of, he loves Pokemon, which was like kind of the tailwind of when I was a kid. Um, yeah. I can't it still going on, so I get him a lot of Pokemon toys and we play the Switch and sing all those songs because I remember the original theme song. So I'll play him different versions of that. But yeah, we have a fun, we have a lot of fun in different things. He's grew up with music, so he knows a lot Love of it. songs. Love it. And what's yours right now? My favorite song right now. Um, I've been so like I said, I've been so busy recently that I haven't had a chance to like dive into too many new albums. Juice World's album, last album was pretty. That, I put press press play on that. Um, outside of that, I've been you know still Kendrick Lamar. Uh, all right, that's kind of been my motivation every time you know. Here we go. It's a little stressful and I need to kind of um, figure out what's going on. I put that on and he reminds me, it's going to be all right. We're going to be all right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Cecil, um, I feel like I've kind of gotten to know you a little bit more as a father. I've definitely known you as a friend. Um, and I just like, I can't wait to see uh, the beautiful human that your son grows up to be. So, yeah, likewise. so we have to set up a play date. Got to get that play oh, date. Going. For sure. For sure. Um, I really hope that he can like, level mine down because he's, he's doing a lot. He's doing a lot. I don't know. He's he's high. Okay. Right. No little right. Thank you so right. much, guys.
Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us on yeah, Someone no. Come Get These Kids cheers. as our inaugural guest. Uh, let's do a little cheers. Yeah, cheers, cheers. Thank you. My bad. I was drinking. My bad. I know. I know. I was going right back in. I, I was just, you know, a little, you know, just a little Russell's. Hey, yo, that was dope. First of all, I just want to say for both of y'all, like, just individual conversations we've all had. I, I really feel like y'all some really dope parents. Like, y'all are way more prepared than I was when I had my oldest son. I didn't know. I thought I was. I, I'm surprised he's still alive. Um, when I had my oldest son and that he's successful in life because I had no idea what I was doing. So. Yo, shout out to both of y'all, man. Just for You're a smart man, Josh. Thank you. No. Thank you, man. Well, that's man. Thank you, just for y'all, man, for just being dope parents, man. Like, y'all, I, man, I, I respect. Um, also, Cecil, I didn't know you was a cigar dude. I love the VSGs. That's like my favorite joint in the world. Yeah, Next yeah. time I see you, we got to do that over some wild turkey. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Send your son to Chicago for, for a weekend or two. <laughs> He'll be fine when he comes back. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be that. Yeah, he won't be the same kid, but he'll be okay. You know what I mean? I used to imagine him coming in smoking a cigar, and then I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uncle Josh loves the kids, man. He'll go, look, he by, tough, time he, by the time we make it back to the A, he'll know how to barbecue, he'll know how to cut grass, all that. He'll be good to go. I already taught him how to barbecue. I taught him how to barbecue. Yeah, so he'll be good to go. But, man, hey, thank y'all, man. I really appreciate y'all. Uh, thank you, Josh, for having us. Thank you, uh, Kampari. That's belong. Dropping these gems, man. Like we need it. We need we need more parents to speak out. I'm I'm excited to see what the other guests that we have as parents are gonna bring in too. So again, thank yeah, y'all again, man. Appreciate it. All right. Go back get in that green room and get the green room lit. You know what I mean? <laughs> thank you, Paris. <laughs> thank you so much. Right. Thank you, Cecil. Thank so you. So guys, guys, that was uh yo, that was just that was the second segment, man. That was dope, right? Somebody come get these kids. That is the edited version of the title I wanted it to be. It was really somebody come get these kids, but you know, we're not gonna say all that live on, you know camera and all that you know it is what it is so yo again y'all know the drill campari community on ig shoot them a follow sign up for the mail list i'm not gonna say it no you know now I'm, i am gonna say it again i'm gonna say it a few more times i'm gonna just say it till everybody does it and then once everybody does it i ain't gotta say it no more right cool but one thing we want to do now is we're going to kind of go back um our partnership with brown and balance started with campari around juneteenth and, you know, anybody that knows what Juneteenth is, um, they know it's a very special day. If you don't know what Juneteenth is, if you go to my Instagram at either Mr. Mixologist or at Brown and Balance, there's a document that's in my link that will have everything what Juneteenth is, what it stands for. And it'll also have the two people I'm about to bring on right now to catch up with after Juneteenth, Ms. Capri Robinson and my big brother, Michael Holiday Jr. And we're going to talk about what they got going on. You know what I mean? Since what they've been doing and work, because they've been out here working since Juneteenth. I've seen it. So we're going to have them on. And they're going to talk about what they got like they got happening. So how y'all feeling today? I'm great. How you doing? Man, I'm, you know, I'm just drinking, you know, hanging out, you know, doing what we do. Yes. Trying to show all this black excellence on the screen. You know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. What, what Chocolate City best been up to since June? I mean, a whole lot of things. We are up to a whole lot. So right now we are gearing up to our uh, third annual competition this year. It's going to be so amazing. We just finished and shut down uh, applications for that. So we're blind judging right now. You all will know the top two coming next week. Um, and I mean, we have so much geared up for them this year. And it's going to be about mentorship. It's going to be about education. It's going to be about empowerment, entrepreneur empowerment, um, and just about having fun and getting together across the country. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, we One really cool thing that just happened is we just dropped a new barrel uh, pick chosen by our partner uh, in crime, Danae Jones. She chose a barrel pick for us and proceeds of that bottle is going to Chuck City's Best and they have already sold out and it just opened up to the public today. So that's a pretty dope thing. That's very, that, no, that's, not, that's very dope. Like I wanted to say something else, but I don't got a cuss button. So I don't, I don't want that. Right. Very, 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 yeah, that's very big dope. You know what I mean? Like that's amazing. Yo. I'm really happy for y'all. Big Mike, what's going on with you, big brother? How you feel? Uh-oh. Yeah, uh -oh. I don't think he's been... Mike got the Teddy Riley phone. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but his his picture looks good in that Espelon bottle. Hey, he looks great. He looks great. He got the Espelon <laughs> Hey, it's okay. 
you when you do stuff live, stuff happens. You feel me? I know Mike's yeah. doing good. I know he's, he's, y'all doing y'all thing, man. I'm really happy for all the things you got going on. What are you Thank um you. are you are you gonna be able because of social distancing? Will y'all be able to do the competition live this year? It's going to be live. You will see that online today. So, uh, I mean, this year, which is really awesome. So look out for that date. That's going to be October 8th that we will be able to have everyone come on, support your top one, or just support in general um, these competitors because they're going to put in a lot of work into their competition cocktails. Um, they're going to be with mentors to make sure their presentations are on on point um and it's going to be great the thing that we're going to be doing in person which i think is pretty cool is the judging portion so we will have judges in a COVID space a safe area to judge and we will be making all of the cocktails for that top 10 for the judges while they're still at home presenting so it's going to be really awesome oh, i think no. um and shout, uh but yeah we're, we're it's going to be a great time i'm excited for everyone thank you for all the people that have said yes to oh, that's be a part. super dope that's super dope hey mike can we hear you yet Nope. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. Hey, that's you know what? Okay. My, you look great. But he looks great. <laughs> the Espelon bottle looks great. You know what I mean? Look, it's cheers, you do, Mike. You know what I mean? I'm I'm really happy. I'm proud of what y'all got going on, man. It's, I've Thank seen y'all basically since the beginning of creating Chocolate City's best and what y'all are doing in the community. It's it's amazing. And you know, like I told you before, you know, anything y'all need from me, you got me. Like anytime Absolutely. call me and let me know what's going on and oh. we'll make it happen. That call will be soon. Do not worry. I'm we got sure. some things I'm sure. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a, a FedEx mic a microphone, man. We're going to get them together. <laughs> 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 <That's> <laughs> so but, real, yo, let the people know how to follow you guys individually and, you know, Chocolate City and all of that, how to find you all on the Internet. Absolutely. So for Chocolate City's Best, you can definitely find us on Facebook and on Instagram at Chocolate dot cities that's c-i-t-y-s dot best um on facebook and instagram we also have a website where you can see what we're doing at chocolate cities best i'm sorry chalk www www.chocolatecitiesbest.com um that's where you'll see all of our initiatives all of our programs and more about our team and about the competition itself you can find all that there my personal page, you can find me at, at capri k-a-p-r-i dot possible and then you can find michael at M holiday like Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. I believe holiday. that's it. <laughs> that ain't holiday, holiday like Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. You feel me? Yes. All right, cool. Um, hey. Thank you. Good. But I have fun, y'all. Thank you to right. Kapari and thank you to Espelon for having us here. We're so excited. Brown and yeah, Balance, hey. y'all best. You know what we do. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank y'all for coming on, catching up with us after that, that dope Juneteenth thing we did. I mean, that was amazing. Appreciate y'all again for being a part of that. Um, and jumping on here today, man, hanging out with me. Um, I don't want to cut y'all short. We're gonna move on to the feature because y'all know we in for it? a treat. We in for a treat with the feature. You know yes. what I'm saying? So we're gonna move into that. I believe I know Mike. Mike was at the infamous Brown and Balance that our feature bartender was at. I don't think you was at that one, Capri. I wasn't at that. I was at, I was at the first. You was at one. the next one. I was at the first one. Right, but the infamous one that we yeah. gonna give a little taste. Mike was there. Okay, I'm ready. Kick me off, kick me off. Put me in the green room. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. Y'all get that green room lit, man, and we're gonna have some fun, man, talking our future bartender. Thank you for having us. No, thank y'all, man. It's it's by my heart. I appreciate everything y'all doing, man. For real. Thank you. All right. All right, y'all. So those are our segments. Uh, those are our, some of our our future guests, man. Mia Love, Cecil Usher, Paris, Mike, Capri. You know, it's all about black excellence, right? It's all about you know, showing the world what brown people can do. What can brown do for you? UPS ain't the only ones that's brown that do amazing things, right? We got some other people out here. But the meat and potatoes of the show, the the, the cream de la creme, I think that's what, the, I don't know, I think that's what the saying is, right? If you have not yet, go follow Thirsty, Thirsty Magazine, Thirsty in LA on Instagram. Every month, shout out to Tara from Thirsty. She puts out our featured bartender in a dope article and, and puts the spotlight on them. And then I come behind and then I'll interview them live so you guys can get a little more peek into their life. But by all means, hit that thirsty and get on. We, I will make sure that when we do the Brown and Balance post show, I'll make sure to put all the links to all of our wonderful partners in that. We're going to keep shouting them out. We're going to keep telling y'all who to follow, who you need to be in the know with. But without further ado, 
I got to come and get bring my brother, my homie, straight from New Orleans, Joe Witowski on. Ah, and you didn't hey, say my name, right? <laughs> y'all I'm telling y'all right now, y'all are in for a treat. Hey. I met this brother in uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, that he was at the infamous Brown and Balanced. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get there in a minute. We'll get there in a minute. Uh, he was yep. also part of a legendary cabin at Camp Run Amok that I feel I had a little bit of a role in why they are a legendary mm -hmm. cabin. So I'm very proud of that. We're gonna learn all of that about this brother. But I have to say, how are you doing, Joe? I am doing real well. And let's start off with, you know. A little shot of hey, some hello. Well, let me, well, let you, me know, know, you know, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That's what this one does. Mm -hmm. I love it, my man. So look, <laughs> tell the people who is Joe, where Joe comes from, and how did Joe get in the industry? How, okay, let's do this like in pieces. Uh, <laughs> who am I? Um, I am this guy that is from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I left eight years ago, moved to New Orleans because I hate winter. And it's really amazing for me to be in a city where there are more people that look like me. So that was a big deal. Uh, what am I about? I have, th I have three rules I follow in life. And that's like how I'm succeeding is show up early, be kind. And that doesn't mean just to other people. Also be kind to yourself, do your self care. And then take feedback and implement it because i've been really lucky to have people that are looking out for me who are like hey try this or maybe you want to research this and that's how like i keep growing so that's like those are my rules uh shift shift i ain't swear yeah, i got you i got you <laughs> uh, um, how did i get into the industry so back in milwaukee i worked at this really cool bar called the highberry it's a soccer bar because my brother was a, I have a twin brother. Twin brother and like right. that, that's, that's my bro. That, that, that's, that's the one person in this entire universe that gets me completely. Like we have twin speak, it's weird, it's great. Uh, so he worked there as a bartender. I was a door guy and you bar man. Imagine me at a door being like, sir. Yeah, I'm like, you were a door guy though? I, I sure was a door guy. guy. I see it. I can see it. I'm I was the door guy when I started. So. I'm the nice, funny door guy. Like, yeah, if you're going to school, I'm going to put you out. Yeah. I can rough you up, but I'm going to try not. I'm just going to cut you with words. <laughs> uh, so I was a bar back, did that. Moved to New Orleans, was a host at a restaurant. And my previous boss at this place, wonderful place I've been working at for the past five years, bakery bar, Jeff Schwartz, was like, hey, you ever thought about being a craft cocktail bartender? And I was like, why not? I can do it. And it was really cool that some person was like, you have skills, you have a personality. I can teach you how to make drinks, but you know how to work a room. And that's most important. So that's how I got here. Word. That's dope. So to get off the industry for a second, because really, like, yeah. we all know what we do industry wise, right? Like, yeah, yeah we all right. make drinks, we have fun with it. But yeah. I wanted we I want the people to know who I know, and that's Joe. And I want to <laughs> learn something new about Joe. So, uh, something new. So What's my about? my older brother and I look extremely a lot alike. He's he's a, about a year and a half older than me. But I mean, if you don't know us, you would think we were twins. But you have a twin. What yes. is life with a twin growing up like? Um, it's a lot of foolery and <laughs> and shenanigans and stunt shows. Uh, there is a great story from when we were like ten. We were at the dentist office and we were like, "No, I'm the other twin." <laughs> and so they had to pull up the dental records and be like, no, you're this twin. Right. No, there's no such thing as a bad twin. All twins are bad. All twins are trying to pull a stunt and act foolish, which is really sweet. Because like when you like, you know how good it feels when you have someone who like has your back and is on your side. Yeah. Like you I was born with that. So yeah. I like had a leg up on my shenanigans. Word. I love it, man. I love it. So, look, growing up, I mean, you in Milwaukee, so I, I really don't want to ask you this. Are y'all Green Bay Packer fans, man? I mean, they got a lot of they got a lot of rings. They hey, got hey, them hey, three. That's not, what I asked. that's not what I asked, Joe. What, what I, whatever Bears fan, you ain't got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Like, I love you, dog, and you know I love you, man. But you know that Green Bay thing is uh, okay. What what colors you see on my screen right now though? I I, I got you. I, I'm with you. You got, that black, you got the black and gold. 
I so you know, okay. come on, Saints. I can deal with that. I can deal with I, that. I've switched. I've switched allegiances. I'm a Saints boy now. We are all, then we are back all, see, now we're back to normal, mm-hmm. right? You know what I mean? Because if you say Green Bay, yeah, because you said Green Bay, the live would have been over with. Like, we, I just would have turned the whole camera Cut. off. Yeah, <laughs> over with, man. Um, but growing up in, in, in Wisconsin, man, what, was there something you wanted to be before you got into this industry that we're in? Like, it turns out, like, I thought a lot about, I wanted to be like a flight attendant or a teacher. So I was like really service focused without realizing it. I yeah. just like seeing people smile. Word, word. That's dope. When you That's make that, when you make that one person like maybe having a bad day, I've had customers who are like sad and upset. And then like you do something and you make them feel seen, you make them feel special. Like it doesn't, that's why I do it. Like Word. taking care of people. Word. I love it. I mean, I think that's the most important thing in our industry, right? Like, like you said, you met a guy and he was like, I could teach you how to make drinks. You know what I mean? Like we can teach people basic, you know, um, techniques and things to do with the cocktails. But that, what you just said to me, I've always said that's the most important thing, which is what Brown and Balance is all about, right? Like bringing people into our culture. And cause I, I feel like inherently because, you know, when we were brought here, you know, our great, 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 great grandparents and all them, they were the, the servers and they were the bartenders and they were the chefs and they were the, they were all that. So it's inherently in us to be service oriented and to make people smile and to want to be welcoming and all of that. So into that, what does Brown and Balance mean to you? Brown and Balanced for me is that acknowledgement that all this work I've been doing through these years is the right work. And like getting asked to be a bartender at Brown and Balance, Spring 19, Camp Run Amok, I was so proud. This is actually the outfit I was wearing. That yeah, was. You know, gotta throw it back. Um, <laughs> for me, that was like, it was for me, it's, it's that I am doing the right work. And then I get to show like, yo, I got some skills. I can do this. Like this, like we all say we don't like, I don't need acknowledgement or I don't need, yes, I want approval. Give me the approval. Tell me I'm cute. Tell me I'm doing good. Tell me my drink tastes great. Like, I love that because then I have that like energy and that like glow within and I'm a glow on everybody else and raise them up. Mm-hmm. Word. So now you, since we talking about can't run them up. So, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so, so hold up, look, now look, now Joe, before I ask you this. PG-13. We cannot, we cannot use, we cannot lose our sponsorships, but I have to ask mm-hmm. you, okay? Shout out to Campari, everybody. Get you some. Yo, if you don't have Get you a Campari product if you don't have it. Right. They take the shot. So now, mm-hmm. bring 18. You were part of a legendary Camp Run Amok cabin. Yes. Um, you were part of, I feel, is I've been going to camp since 2014, 2015. I feel like you were y'all were the only cabin where it was all people of color because it wasn't just yes. guys in there. A couple Spanish homies, you know what I'm saying? I don't really like being I don't personally like being called a person of color, call me what I am, a black man. But yeah. overall, their cabin had, you know, all shades of brown in it. We were the first I, time. The first time that I remember from my, my experience at camp. I also remember that you guys, before we changed the way camp goes, y'all won camp. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to share something with you. Brittany Leach knows it, and Lindsay and all, all the team, they know it. You know, I've never told this to you, though. I told it to Mark, and uh, I told it to Calvin. I'll never forget when we were tallying up. There was you guys, and there was another cabin that was, like, right in the room. Exactly Y'all were neck and neck to win camp and come back. And I said, I sent it in a group text. This is my exact group text. I'm going to read it. I'm just on my phone right here. I said, hey, guys, I've never seen a cabin full of brown people. I feel that that would be the most – impactful, important thing in the history of Camp Run Amok to have a cabin full of brown people, whether it be male, female, whatever, win camp and come back. Because when I was going to camp, me and Gene Samuel, shout out to my brother, were like the only two black guys there. We did the, the black people photo at camp in 2015, the very first one. It was me, him, Eric Bennett, Aaron Joseph. It was like seven of us. And to go from that one all the way up to you guys, and it was about 30 people in that photo we had. I said, for 
future generations of brown bartenders, this will be the most impactful thing they will ever, ever see is to have a cabin full of brothers win camp. What did that mean to you when you guys won camp? I remember I saw you when it happened, but what um, did that mean? To you? So, like, they said our name, or they were going through like the top three. Ooh. And I was just like, and I knew we were like in the running, but I didn't know like where we were. And then like they said the third place. And I was like, cool. We got second. Like we did a good show. We did great. And then they said second place and they did not say our name. I started crying because I was so proud of us just being ourselves and taking up space and being visible. And that meant the world to me because it meant, yo, like y'all are doing it. Like black kid magic. Like it was exactly, I was myself. I was ridiculous. I was wearing crazy outfits, just being myself and being supported by my cabin and by everybody else was so cool. Cause it meant like, we are, we are what the future looks like. And that's, and we got to bring people with, and that's the coolest part. Yeah. Yeah. No, I loved y'all for that. I remember I, I was standing off to the side because I started crying. Y'all know I'm not the most emotional dude in the world. I started crying because I was like, yo, I've never seen this happen before. And the fact that I had a say in this happening, that made me feel so good <laughs> to see y'all, man. Because, again, I didn't know you. Don't, I, it's funny. I didn't know anybody in your cabin. Um, like you're even Mark, right? Mark, are you crying now, man? No, I'm not crying. Oh, I'm like, we need to take a shot real quick, dog. Get our edge back. You know what I mean? Yeah, get some mess balloon in there, right, man. What's, what's, what's mess balloon in this? My yeah. little skull. I, I took a, I took a, 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 a quote from me. I'm drinking some Russell's Reserve and some black tea. You know what I mean? Uh, so, that's been what I've been drinking. Like in the beginning, it was Russell's Reserve and like some green tea with a little bit of mint. That's the, man. perfect. You don't need to do nothing else. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, yeah I, I just I'll never forget that day. That that, that was so. Because again, a couple of days before that was the very first Brown and Balanced camp. Where uh, I'm just gonna say this: I got to know you a lot better than I ever expected getting to know you. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking. Uh, yeah, if we, you were there, you. If you were there, you were there. If, if not, there's were, some photos. Um, so we can do this with what you can share of that evening. What was the, the, the thing you enjoyed most about being at Brown and Balance and then also the very next year coming back and actually bartending at Brown and Balance? First year, it was so cool just to see just my skin folk, like just my skin folk making the party what it was. Watching y'all pop bottles on the stage, hosing people down. There is confetti. There is people in outfits. There was that slow motion camera that we want to see the footage from still. Because let's be real, oh, it's legendary. Oh, oh yes, God. it's legendary. I want to see that. Um, <laughs> it was a moment with like, and but it was really cool because like everyone like that was night four or five of camp yeah so by then everyone had let their guard down and were vulnerable and just were in the moment and just doing it and just see everyone come together celebrating black and brown bartenders it's like this is what it is it was so cool so then next year getting asked like on our victory lap year where i became my my original cabin counselor got sick so like the day we were driving up to camp, I get a text message from like Brittany Leach and them. And it's like, hey, we need to talk to you. And of course I'm in a car and you know, you get those text messages you're like, oh, something's wrong. I got kicked out of camp. I don't know what I did, but I got kicked out. I'm a pass, I like, you know, I freak out. I'm Midwestern. I always think the worst, um, <laughs> but it was, hey, we want you to step up and be the counselor for your cabin because this person can't be there, Calvin. Like I did that. And it was terrifying because it's like suddenly I'm in charge. I'm the guy like telling people to get on the bus and be on time. So from, and then that Brown and Balance 19, my guys went to bed early, which was weird. I was like, which yeah. other? Yeah. But it meant I got to let loose. Yeah. And you and did. And I sure did. You did. Yeah. Okay. Outfit, drinking some bubbles, <laughs> enjoying all the things. And it's just like, and then to be like standing next to Dan Miranda out in San Francisco, who I was, um, he was fall 18, the cabin we were in. So like, and I love him and I met him in Mexico officially. And just like being able to share that with someone, I really, 
have grown to admire and respect. And like the two of us are making these drinks and just having people come up to me and be into what I've done and getting to look around the room and see all these other amazing brown bartenders doing amazing work. I was just like, this is, this is what it is. Like, this is what yeah. it means to be successful for me. Right. Word. I love it. Yeah, no, that was a, that was a great, great. Night. I mean, I, I loved it. Cause that was a, I started to step back and I was like, you know, I don't want to bartend the Brown and Bounces anymore. I, I want to identify the bartenders who are needed and I want them to get that shine. Enough people know who I am. I don't want, more people need to know who Joe is than John. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you have been, since I've met you, like, dog, I mean, I'm keeping a hundred. Like you've been a ray of sunshine for me. Like every time, you know, I see your statuses or we talk or we chat, you're always positive. Like I've never seen you have a bad day. And I love that because I get down on myself a lot. You know what I mean? I stay there. I, I'm hard on myself and I'm hard on my sons. You know what I mean? So when I see like me, you having just a good day all the time, I'm like, damn, man, I want to be like Joe a little bit. Like, even when I have a bad day, cause I have them and it's real. And it's especially like right now. Yeah. Like, I mean, I did the like gay guy COVID crisis yeah. where you shave your hair off, you bleach it out. Like you have a moment. Let me fix my crown. Right. Right. Like, even if you have a bad day, you find the silver lining. It's like, you know what? I'm having a bad day. But then I like say something and so many people are like, yo, how can I be there for you? And that's, I think that's really special. And I may not always acknowledge or say thank you to everybody, but like when people say they got my back or they support me, like I take that to so much heart. Like I have to keep pushing forward because I don't want to ever give up because there's so many people rooting for me that it would be a disservice to that if I just shut down and gave up. Right. And something you alluded to just a second ago, man, I, I would definitely love to get your input. Um, being a black man and then also being a black gay man, what advice, and, and, the, and before I even ask, I want to say the thing I love about you most is you are authentically you. And I know some people feel like, you know, they have to code switch and different things like that. And you've never done that. You've always been cool as Joe Witowski. And I love it because I love people who are themselves. Because when you meet me, you're going to get me. And if you don't like it, you fight me. Or, you know, you definitely don't want to do that. So, yeah, it's like I don't really care. I'm going to always be Josh. And I, I'm always motivated to be around people who are authentically themselves as you are. So if there was a young, you know, black member of the LGBTQ community, that was coming up in the ranks and you know there are different things that you might face discriminatory things that you might face part of being being part of two marginalized communities what would be the best advice you would love to give a younger black a younger joe Witowski? what would be the best thing you would tell them? i would tell young me it don't matter if they like you or not because honestly the people that are going to like you are going to like you and the ones that aren't going to help you on your journey forget them leave them in the dust. You don't need that. You don't need that energy. Uh, I've been really lucky. I have a network of bartenders that are LGBTQ, be whatever color they are. We all look out for each other and we talk to each other like on the daily. And so we look out for each other. If someone's having a rough day, we give advice. We look, we provide opportunities They're like, Hey, look at this thing. Who wants to do this? And so like what I'm trying to do now with my life is I've been given access to some really cool things. How can I bring other people to that party? What? Like when I'm out there, I'm on Facebook being like, yo, apply to Camp Runamuck or hey, come do this thing or come watch this video. Like start meeting the people that are going to push you to the next level, regardless of where you come from. They want to know you. They want to know your story. What? And if I can help you put your story out there, let me help you. Cause I want you, I want your story heard. It's important. No, you sound like you've had a conversation with me a couple of times. Cause that's definitely all I tell people all the time, man. I love it. Come on, let's be <laughs> real. You boosted me up here. Like you brought me here. So it's my job now to bring the next Joe Wachowski or whoever they are up. I ain't bring you here. You brought yourself here, dog. You, I mean, you were you. You were you, I'm man. Fool. Yeah. I'm a fool. Let's, I'm gonna be a fool. I'm not, I like, I could care. I used to care. I used to care so much about how people took me and it took until I hit 30, by the way, I'm older than 30 y'all surprise. <laughs> if, 
like your early 20s are such like that weird like who am i how do i fit and then you realize like at 30 it's like you open a door you walk through and you're like why did i care why did I care what that one person thought about me on that Tuesday in September? Like, I don't, and you don't have to. Like, don't be a, in camp rules, like, don't be a dick, and you'll be fine. Number one, rule number one in life. All right, all right. One. Look, I'm gonna light it up one more, one more question I gotta ask you, because mm -hmm. you've been watching P Valley? I haven't, and I want to, it's on the list. Damn it, Joe, I had I had I a know. good question. I had a real good question. I can't even ask you now. Okay. I so mean, look, I've been I watch a lot of Star Trek. I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. Hey, watch it. But I'm watching watch Valley. 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 Look, look, You'll get a text message. Look, look, watch the first five episodes, text me, and we'll have a review after that, man. But yeah, yes. well, since yes. I can't ask yes. my P Valley question. Damn, okay, no. what else you got? Let's talk me? about this dope. Let's talk about this great Espelon cocktail that you made. Oh, let's break it okay, down so, and tell them what it is. Let's break it down. So this cocktail that I made, A New Day, because I'm at home, I have a very limited ice program, but <laughs> we also learned this week from Camper English, as sponsored by all of this going on, how to do like great ice at home, which awesome. Maybe I can step up my game. So I love tequila drinks. Like my go-to is either a Paloma or like a tequila sunrise or a firing squad. Like these are things that I love because it's really easy for me and I love I love tequila. It's a thing. So I wanted to make a tequila sunrise riff, but I wanted to like do it so I wanted to do something a little special. So I did that half sphere of orange juice frozen as opposed to a full sphere cuz the proportions were off, but it just it's a new day. And like I think especially right now during COVID and all of this we have to remember that like days are still coming. There's still a future. Like, yes, we can get bogged down in depression and frustration and confusion, but there's still a new day. The sun's still gonna come up. So you still gotta move forward and embrace it. Cause like every day is another chance to do something that makes you happy. Word. So Love, that's it. Why I Love it. Hey, a new day. That's all hey, I'm all about that. So look, rapid fire. Yes, you, can, let's you can pick five brown bartenders to start your bar. They don't have to be just from New Orleans. They can just be people you know. Five brown okay. bartenders to start your bar program with. Okay. And why? Number one, number one, Chris Hanna. Because that man's knowledge set is so beautiful. He is kinfolk and skinfolk. And he I don't think is. enough people know that. And I want... I want Chris Hanna to feel celebrated because he is one of us. He sure is. And his skill set is so tight. He sure is. Um, I got two people, and I'm like, two of the, these two people I'm going to talk about, I'm really lucky because I work with them at Bakery Bar. I got Miss Janae. Of course. Of course. Who is the most organized human being and, like, glamorously beautiful, effortlessly <laughs> stunning on life like janae is janae is organization life goals and a parent and she is amazing and her baby's real cute oh my god uh genevieve is so cute and then there's cheyenne williams that's my cheyenne serene that's my baby like she's my little sister she was one of those people that i brought into camp but she pushes me to be better all the time because I want to impress her. That's like, without her, I wouldn't have pushed myself as hard as a bartender to try new techniques, try new things. And when she's like, yeah, big sis, you got this. I'm like, yes, I did it. Um, I want Paris, because <laughs> Paris, like, yo, like, if anyone knows, like, Paris and I, we met at spring 18. I have talked to Paris every other day at the like it's it's either every day or every other day we have talked since we have met like paris is fam for life that is my i'm ride or die for paris ride or die for paris do i have to do only five because there's like seven people that i want name I them want, all you know what name them all we could do god, it right? israel from here in new orleans i want oh god i want dan miranda i want aaron joseph like I like 
I want the photo from camp of all the brown, like I want a collective of like a chain of brown run bars of all the people from those photos Word. across the country. Because if we just have brown and balanced New Orleans, brown and balanced New York, brown and balanced Bay Area, if we had a hey. chain of bars where we, I know I just said something. You I know just, I just hey, said Hey, hey, hold on. Don't, let's not go too deep because you just gave me, like, mm -hmm. I'm going to call mm -hmm. Mia and we're going to get the credit, the business credit right, and we're going to, you just gave me an idea, Joe. Uh, uh. <laughs> my idea. There's just, I've been, the, the depth and breadth of talent that I've been exposed to, especially because of Brown and Balance, I'm like, how could I not want to work with that person? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. There's so many. There's so many of us that are so freaking brilliant and talented and warm and welcoming that I just want to work with everybody because I'm going to learn everything from y'all. Let's do it. All right. Well, look, we because I, I could talk to you all day, but know, right? we've gone a little over. Because I got to do the, you know, I got to do the whole closing remarks, all the other cool stuff. So before we leave, what is one Joeism that you live by and that you move by that you would like to leave with the people? Find your light. Be it a person, be it like me in this. I built a studio in my kitchen with two lights on me. Like, find your light. Because once you find your light and you find your reason, for being amazing, like it's not even your reason for being amazing. It's like how you get that shine on you. Yeah. Once you find that shine, you will never be lost. You may struggle, you may work, but you're never going to be lost once you find your light. I, I love it. And as you're saying that, I'm looking at you, and whatever your light is positioning, brother, is glowing on you, looking like Black Jesus over there, man. Joe, <laughs> hey, dog, I love you, man. Thank you for Love your you. time. Thank you for being the first initial <laughs> feature bartender <laughs> from Brown and Balanced on Thirsty and on Brown and Balanced Live, dog. You already know, man. Anything you ever need from me, I I got you. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Patro or thank you, oh, Esmeralda. Oh, I almost right. I got tequila. <laughs> thank you, Campari. Because like I've done so much this year with Campari, and I'm so thankful for Campari. Thank you, Lush Life. Thank you, Brown and Balance. The people, the teams that have taken all these photos and drawn all these illustrations. Like when I saw that cartoon in me, I was like, ooh, it's oh, that thick. Was, that was dope. I was like, my cartoon is thick. <laughs> I was that so was happy. Dope. Hey, man. Well, I appreciate you, man. Jeff back in the green room. I know they probably back there getting lit. I'm going to meet y'all in the green room in a little while, man. But I got to, you sure. know, do a couple more yeah, things, man. I appreciate you, Joe. Thank you for your time, man. Thank you. All right, y'all. So, yo, that was our first guest. That was Joe Witowski, everybody. I mean, what I mean, what more can be said, right? Just a dope individual um, who did his thing, who, again, first guest. I couldn't have picked a better guest to be on here for the first guest, man, to kind of set the tone, let you guys know what's coming. So just understand, this is the first time. Meet us back here on October 9th, 10-9, and we're going to do this again with a whole nother lineup of dope, amazing humans that will be showing us and telling us and helping us out and doing different things. So before we get out of here again, I just want to say shout out to my brother, Law Willis, man, for this hat, man. We This is what we need to end more than anything. Um, we need to end racism, period. Um, we ain't got to go too deep into it. Y'all can catch me on Brown and Balance Instagram. It'll be in the comments. Uh, we're going to do a little post show in a few minutes just to kind of clear up some stuff and just talk to the people. Get y'all, please get out there and vote. If the last couple of days ain't showed y'all, y'all need to get out there and vote. I don't know what will. I, I'm just gonna be honest with you. Um, get out there and vote. There will be initiatives that we will be posting. Lush Life, Brown and Balance. We will all be posting different initiatives, different sites for you to go. Make sure you're registered. Make sure you get out there. Make sure your vote counts. Cause I'm gonna just be a hundred man. I can't go through four more years of this, y'all. I'm. This is. <laughs> I'm not going to put my personal views on it right now, but just understand, get out and vote, people. And even if you do vote, you know, for whoever you vote for, just make sure your vote counts. Um, this is the first year I've ever voted in my life will be this year. I can't wait. We're going to have some fun. We're going to do our thing. Uh, I love you guys. Shout out to Campari again. Thank y'all. I'm going to bring the squad back on one more time, man. Everybody coming in at once. See so if anybody wants to say goodbye, anybody wants to leave something out there. 
I see P and J. They go Mia. Um, <laughs> in the building. Yeah, I feel like yeah, just yeah. Um, what I always say. You were talking about voting. Vote, hydrate, moisturize, vote. and stay in your lane, y'all. Like that's those are like the four life lessons that I can give to you. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yo. Bruce, Anybody else got name? Be, be on time. Be kind, and take the feedback. Like that. Moisturize. Don't forget to moisturize. You know, black don't crack, but we still need to moisturize. Get that good cocoa butter. You know. I'll be all right. All right. Well, mm -hmm. I think that's it, man. Everybody, yo, thank y'all. I appreciate all y'all coming off for the first show, man. And we having some fun. And if nobody else got nothing, man, we are out. All right. Thank you, Josh. Well, y'all. Uh, hey. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Campari. Thank you, Campari. Voice, vote, voice. Vote, hydrate, moisturize, and stay in the lane, y'all. Eddie. Stay in that lane. There it is, y'all. Cheers, man. <laughs>